I would like to bring up Leah and Callie. Thank you so much for that introduction, Jack. Um, we're very honored and we're actually the best ecology on tap talk of all time, in our opinion at least, was by Jack. And it was dating profiles for chili peppers. And we were very moved by that. And it was a big inspiration for our own, our own talk. So his talk was on Valentine's Day. And we are bringing back the love vibes because, you know, things are opening back up. People have vaccines. So we're thinking that you all might be getting your dating profiles ready to, uh, you know, get back playing the field. So we wanted to continue that love story vibe and tell you a love story of your yard and urban plants. So our talk is aptly called Plants and the City. <laughs> Oh, okay, so to start us off, I want everybody to close your eyes and picture nature, all right? Maybe it's the post that you posted on your Instagram to celebrate Earth Day. Maybe it's the last place you went outdoors and felt safe because nobody else was around you, right? We all picture nature as this pristine landscape. So Kelly and I, you can open your eyes. Kelly and I, have this nice picture of the Smokies, which is lovely, right? This is majestic nature right here. But that's not the nature that we see every day, and it's not the nature that we love every day. Instead, the nature that we love every day it looks more like this. A yard. This is my yard. This is Callie's yard. She lovingly took a picture of it just to share with you guys all today. So. We are going to talk about our favorite kind of nature today, urban nature, nature in the city. And we're going to frame our talk as a love story. So I'm going to talk about the yard, all right, and the, the functions of the soil in, the, in a city environment. And then Callie's going to hit us with the plants. And we're going to picture this like a dating scene, all right? So we're the yard, and we are out on the prowl. We got our vaccine, we're ready to go, okay? So to start us off, let me describe some yard life. <laughs> so the first thing that the soil in the city has to contend with is limited space. All right, so we've all seen it. We've got pavement everywhere. We live in a city. Pavement, you can't really grow plants on the pavement. So the first thing that any plant coming into our life is gonna have to deal with is limited space. So maybe, you know, we've, we've had past relationships. We might not have the full capacity to love again, but there is some capacity, right? So you can see we've got this big tree and look it, its roots are like cut off by the sidewalk. What the heck? We don't love that, but it's still growing anyways. There's still some space, even though it's limited by pavement. <laughs> the second limitation comes from grass. And I'm going to spare you guys my turf grass rant. Um, don't spare us. <laughs> don't spare us. <laughs> okay, so in short, turf grass is my least favorite plant. I'm going to say it. Its roots are wimpy. It does nothing for the soil. People pay so much to grow turf grass, right? It costs more per capita to grow turf than it does corn. Like, think about all the pesticides, herbicides, all the junk that we put on our turf grass. It limits the space for our urban plants. You're not gonna get a nice plant to grow if you're trying to cultivate a monoculture of grass. So. You know, pavement limits the space, turf grass also limits the space. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Another thing that, that, you know, maybe if you're getting out on the dating scene and your soil, you're thinking, oh shoot, I'm a little compacted, right? I don't have quite as much air space and water space as like a beautiful, outside the city landscape, but things can still grow. I'm like, 
not the best, but the people did this to me. So I got to just kind of work with what I got, right? So urban soil is really compacted because humans kind of treat it like garbage, right? We don't love the soil. Clearly, we smush it, right? But we're trying to get plants into our yard. It's a limitation we're working with. So we just got to make sure that the plants know and that maybe they can overcome it. <laughs> While we're talking about the dirt, let's talk about the nutrients and the food. So some patches of soil in the city are super hot with nutrients, right? They've got nitrogen, they've got potassium, they've got phosphorus, they're dark, they've got woody debris. They are the exact type of soil that you want. And it's probably because some gardener lived in your house before you owned it, <laughs> right? Other parts of soil in the city look like this top corner, like it's just one color, it's one texture, it's not dark, it's not fertile, it's gonna be hard to grow something in there. So we've got this patchy mosaic in the city, which isn't good and isn't bad, right? If you are the lucky plant to find a good patch, you are golden, right? You're finding, finding the dream soil environment, but you could also strike out, kind of like Tinder. <laughs> and la lastly, Sometimes there's pollution in the city, right? We all know this. Uh, we all saw the pictures of Chit Fest last weekend, right? There is sometimes obvious pollution in the soil, sometimes not obvious pollution in the soil if your old home had lead paint and you got some lead in your soil. But a lot of times plants can work with that, right? They can grow around the pollution. Maybe a friendly neighborhood organization cleans up the pollution, you know, City plants, they're, they've got a lot to deal with, but also they've got a lot of love. And the urban soil has some, some downfalls, but also some good stuff too. So now we're gonna switch to plants. Oh, oh just kidding, just kidding. I gotta tell you about the dating profile. <laughs> right, so now we know about the yard. The yard's on Tinder, folks. The yard, two million years old. Urban soil, two million. That's Can you believe so, it? So much experience. Mm -hmm. They deserve love. Soil's been around the block, but it's ready. It's ready, and it's looking for some plants. It's on the prowl. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So who's out there? Who are the eligible plants that our yard might consider? Okay, so I'm breaking it down into just a few like traits, like what's out there in the urban plant sphere. And these are kind of some things to look for or maybe some red flags um, to, to not look for, um, but it's just, it's what's out there. This is what exists. So I'm gonna go through these and kind of starting with things that are characteristics of the plants themselves and then how they interact with other things and then like maybe larger interactions with the whole ecosystem. So traits of the plants themselves, we like them fit in our yard, I gotta say. So robust plants, a more negative way to say robust, which is a nice positive word would be aggressive but you get the idea. So you've got these hardened persistent parts basically. So think of like a tree trunk, you know, that's a hardened above ground part, but also think below ground. You've got these chonky roots. This urban soil, it's got some challenges, but some roots can deal. And some plants like this pawpaw here do both. So they have a trunk and they have a crazy root. So they're like, However deep the soil is, I'm going there. I'm doing it. <laughs> Next up, the ability to spread. 
So seeds are maybe like the first thing you think of as the ability to spread seeds that spread really easily. But also think about things like bits of stems and roots that can like creep around and move across the landscape. So like these strawberry runners, that can also be um, a really good way to spread by, by clonal movement. Showy flowers. So what's going on here is that humans, we love showy flowers. So we pick plants that have showy flowers. We plant them in our yards. We've been doing this for years. And then, oh, lo and behold, what happens after all these years is that what's on the urban landscape escaping and moving around showy flowers. But these are, this is good. You know, we like showy flowers. We want to have big, beautiful, nice flowers in our, in our yards, right? Okay, now moving on to association. So Bee Collective, what's up? We love those insect associations, right? You know, if, you're, if you are with a partner who is really good at making friends, right? That just makes your whole life better. It makes your whole social sphere expand, right? And not just insects, but also animals. You know, that some plants are really important food or habitat species for animals. And you could create a nice refuge in your yard if you're able to have plants that bring in these animals. These are human associates now, right? So humans like plants, we like to eat them sometimes. So that can be nice to have some edible plants in your yard. On the flip side, some plants are toxic, but in the urban environment, this can be a good strategy. So this word actually, allelopathic, that means plants that are toxic to other plants, so not necessarily humans. So this example here, this is sage, so obviously edible to humans, but it is toxic to other plants. So urban environment, crappy soil, plant gets in there, establishes, making chemicals in the soil to kind of dig a moat, because it's like, I'm in the soil, this is my area, you can't have it and no other plants are gonna come and encroach on it. So that's what's going on with this, this strategy. It can be a really good strategy in urban environments, but we may not want that toxicity in our lives. Am I right? You know, this could be, this could be a very big red flag to look out for. So, um, you know, you, if you wanna have other plant species, a nice diverse environment in your yard, you know, we wanna, we wanna promote inclusivity, right? So this could be something to look out for, I'd say. And this can be a big effect. This picture here, this is thickets of sage in California where nothing is growing around them, all that light color. They can have a huge effect on an ecosystem, which brings me to the last thing to look out for. Is This is what we call ecosystem engineers. So, you could have a bad version of this with allelopathy. The chemicals, they're changing the soil for the whole ecosystem, but this could also be a positive thing. So here's a few examples. So the first thing I think of with ecosystem engineers is actually mangroves. So think of like a marine coastal system. Mangroves are the marine coastal system. They're setting their roots, they're holding the soil, and they're creating habitat for all the fish that live there. Um, an Ohio example though, think of a crop, like a cover crop. So this is alfalfa, and it is able to take nitrogen from the air along with microbes and incorporate that into the soil and enrich the soil. And so obviously that helps out the alfalfa, but then after the alfalfa is gone, it helps out the crops. Same things can happen in your yard. You can have plants that help deposit soil or help enrich soil, and that could scale up into a whole yard effect if um, you know you have enough of them around. So these are all some good things to potentially look out for as well. Um, we were billed, I think, as giving a talk about native versus invasive species, which we haven't mentioned yet. So before I finish these, I should talk about that because <laughs> that's kind of what we study. Um, but I mean, that's not particularly the focus of this talk. There are a lot of invasive and native plants potentially popping up in your yard, but to me, the reason I'm bringing up this now is that I think invasive should only apply to things that have a big ecosystem impact. So if a plant is non-native, but it's not having a huge negative impact, I think it's fine. If it has nice pretty flowers and you like it, let it hang out in your yard. Not a big deal. Are we ready? We know what we're looking for. So we've got the background. 
It's time to see if we can find some matches. <laughs> okay, so the rest of the talk is pretty casual. We just have some dating profiles that we want to, we're going to assess. We want you all to assess also. So we'll work together to find a good match for your yard. <laughs> okay, first up. Our first plant is the uh, the Canada Goldenrod, right? So this is this is a young gun out of the gate, two years old, and really looks like they're putting it all out there. We can see this plant from every angle. <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate a good brute shot. You know, I'm not gonna lie. Just <laughs> let me know what you're working with. Ooh, another thing I appreciate, I love when a dating profile shows like, they show a little bit of their like character, like they have a, a piece of literature that, that re they relate to and you know, speaks to them. You know, I like that. Also, one of the things I like to look for as the urban soil, I'm looking for plants that can, have, that can bring friends to the yard, right? I don't want a monoculture of grass. And this, we've got a friend in the photo. Other friends are coming to the yard, yo. <laughs> That's right. And this this happens to be New England Aster. So they have this gorgeous, like yellow and purple vibe going on. Gorgeous addition to your yard. So Aster is another, it's another similar one to look out there. I don't know if they're available right now, but like, you know. <laughs> so thinking about the plant traits, right? We've got some insect associates, we've got some bird associates. Parts of this plant are edible, that's great for humans. Um, unfortunately, it's a little toxic. Right, so I actually didn't know that before putting this talk together, but this species <laughs> is invasive in other parts of the world. Um, and one of the ways it's able to do that is because it is allelopathic, it makes those chemicals, conditions the soil, and then other things can't grow there. So what do we think? Do we invite this plant to the yard? Yeah. Right? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a match! It's a match! Yay! Adorable. Okay, next up, common milkweed. So let's think about common milkweed. Okay, so another local, a little bit older, been around a little bit more. Gorgeous flowers. I mean, the first impression is good. And we have another nice friend shot here with a lovely pollinator. That's a big pro for this species. You know, this is, milkweed is an all-star when it comes to being a beneficial plant for insects. Um, not only the, the famous association with monarchs, but they have a lot of other really important associations. And I love that seed shot, right? We've got the nice fluffy seed shot. These seeds are gonna go everywhere. You get them in one spot in the yard and they will get all over the yard, which depending on what your yard's looking like, this could be a great deal or it could be a little bad. Yeah, so not only do we have spread via seeds, but if you could check out this like bottom right corner uh, picture here, these guys spread clonally as well. But we're into it. We like those thick, we like those thick, with two C's, uh, milkweed monocultures. But you know, I, I am getting some like kind of intense vibes from this. So this may be a plant that you have to like cut back every couple years, you know? I don't know. Might be a little too aggressive for the yard. In certain circumstances. I like it in my yard, but you know. But maybe your neighbors. So what, should we invite We're this to the yard? <laughs> yeah, we love yeah, milkweed. Great, it's a match. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, we don't mean to um, talk down to milkweed, yeah. but you know, we do, we do know it has a tendency to spread. Yeah. Oh, but guess who doesn't? Butterfly weed. Our other milkweed friend that doesn't spread. And the best reason why is because this taproot though. That root though. That root is literally the best thing for your yard. Got compacted soil? This root can break it up, right? It can deal with your compaction issues. 
<laughs> it can. It can accommodate that soil. And if you're interested, you can hit him up on Snapchat. I don't know if you saw that. Rudy boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. But, okay, so the thing, though, that we wanted to say, we're not actually swiping on butterfly weed because he's located not in your yard. This is something you got to bring into your yard. So it's going to be a little more work. He's not necessarily in the neighborhood, but you should go out and find him because he's worth it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Next up, Redbud. Red bud. So we've all seen Redbud these past couple weeks. It's the beautiful pink shrub in the city right now, blooming, right? Gorgeous. I mean, I love a pink flower. The yard. Yard needs some color, right? So this is some, some pretty attractive shrub right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is another really good first impression. We love our red bud. Um, I, reading his profile, I feel like he's maybe, he's like a little too good for me almost, but it's like aspirational, you know? Like I, I wanna be the kind of yard that can be there for red bud, right? But maybe I'm just not so sure, right? If I'm not, if I'm that soil that's like a little degraded, like I want somebody too good for me because like, I, you know, sometimes I need that in my life. And this red bud is a nitrogen fixer. So this could be good for my degraded soil. That's right. I don't know if you noticed their beer preference listed here. They like those nitros, <laughs> nitrogen gas, fixing that nitrogen. Yeah, 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 okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't need to spell it out for you. You guys got it, you're smart. Okay. All right, so should we invite Redbud to the yard? <laughs> yeah, another match. Oh my gosh, we're in a roll. That is three matches in a row, like 3.5, because we're gonna include butterfly weed. So yeah. turns out we're a hot commodity, this urban soil. That's right. We've got some, we got some value, right? That's right. Yeah. Go get it. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if our streak continues. Oh, so this one, they have super liked us. Makes you feel good, right? It's a nice little pat on the back. Feeling good for the ego. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's got some nice nice white flowers. I'm all about those those floral vibes in the yard. Yeah. <laughs> Tasty though a little toxic. Hmm. <laughs> okay, okay, real talk though, real talk though. Who raise your hand if you cannot resist a Scorpio? Yeah, also, I am a Scorpio. <laughs> My boyfriend's a Scorpio. Um. <laughs> so we, we love him, and we also don't at the same time. <laughs> yeah, but do we, do we love garlic mustard? That is the question at hand. You know, Kelly, I'm getting kind of a gross vibe all about setting that seed. Kind of gross. Kind of gross. Yeah, I mean, I respect the hustle. <laughs> Um, and I mean, I love me some Rico Nasty on the anthem there, but I don't know if that is the image to put out for your profile. I don't know. It's just, it seems a little red flaggy to me. Also, I wanted a lot of friends in the yard, right? We talked about Goldenrod bringing the aster. This pick of uh, garlic mustard looks a little monoculture-y. One other thing I want to note about the pictures too, notice, this is a pet peeve of mine on a profile. Okay, so age two. This is a two-year-old plant. This is a plant that flowers in its second year. Image, top, top right, exhibit A. This is a non-flowering individual. This is an old photo, audience. <laughs> this is an outdated photo. They are selling us something that they do not have to give. <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> Also, I'm a little worried that this plant is gonna change the soil for the worse because garlic mustard is allelopathic. It's got that scary skull and crossbone symbol. It is not great for other plants and it is not great for the soil. Yeah. All right, is it time? It's time. 
What do we think? A thumbs up, a thumbs down? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm -mm. No, no. Okay, let's see. let's see who comes next. Bush honeysuckle. You know, I'm on the soil, a little two million years old. This is a nice old plant. I know we're gonna have a long-term relationship. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at look at this image. Yeah, setting up house, <laughs> setting setting up. They're gonna stick around, and I'm getting some. Maybe some broy vibes from from uh, their profile here. Yeah, it seems a little macho, and you know, I don't know if I'm I'm an urban yard. I'm not trying to go for that macho look. If I was going for macho, I'd be in the suburbs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this guy's welcome in the suburbs either, but you know, yeah. Okay, I'm not sure I have much else to yeah, say about yeah. uh, say about poor Mr. Bush honeysuckle here. I think we're a little offended because they say zodiac signs mean nothing, and we already have a, opinions about Scorpios. So I don't know if this is our vibe. We have them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do we think? We invite him to the yard. No. 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 Okay, great. All right, one more. Okay, so dandelion. Oh, oh, yeah, I hear some, it's a little controversial, you know? We all know dandelion. We've all seen them around. But have you ever thought about them like that, you know? Like for your yard? <laughs> um, yeah, so I feel like they seem like a pretty chill plant. And I'm, I might be open to it. And you know I said the thing on the first profile we saw with goldenrod where it's like, it's, it really gets me if they have a nice little piece of literature. And we have that here as well. A nice, you know, Columbus poet even. Like, they know what's up. And you know me, I'm all about those roots. And they're showing us a nice root pick. Guys, look at this thing. This gorgeous taproot. Like... Think about how good this would feel in the soil. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> that tapro can accommodate some soil. Ow, ow. Okay, we're, we're almost done. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so what do we think of dandelion? We're into it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're, I'm feeling it. Okay. I'm feeling it. <laughs> Yeah! Woo! We love dandelion! We love it. All right. Okay, so we matched with four, I think, plants today, or, or five. Um, and so, but there are obviously lots of other really amazing plants that could be a good match for your yard. Um, so we're here. We'd love to talk about them if you want to come and talk to us. Um, but some other resources, it happens to be Ohio Native Plant Month. So there's this cool website that has awesome resources of amazing nurseries that you wouldn't have known about otherwise and cool plants. Um, so check that out if you wanna know what to encourage or to plant in your yard. Uh, we have another couple of our favorite local nurseries that we love listed here. So I'd Sci Odo Gardens and Riverside Native Trees. And then if you want to really go hard, you can get into Prairie Moon Nursery's website, which is one of our favorite resources for learning about native plants and how to grow them. And they also, you can order seeds and you can order seeds that are specific to Ohio that are great for your yard. Oh. We're just in time for the train. Cheers. Yay. <laughs>